We got it. All right. <clears throat> Are we good? You're good. All right. Hello, everybody. Um, my name is Brandy Yaris, and I'm so thankful to be invited here today. Um, so happy to see new faces and help new people. Hi, I saw her way by. <laughs> um, I am a director out of Napa, Idaho. Um, I was saying earlier, I'm about 11 miles away from home office, so I can't smell it from here, but I can get real close. Um, yeah, it's super, super fun having that so close. Um, so I just wanted to chat. This is some of uh, one of the, my team's favorite topics. I, I get a lot of, how do I say this? Or, okay, I know what I wanna do, uh, do you have a text? Like most people struggle with wording. So you're not, or my team at least, isn't struggling exactly with what they want to say. It's more of how they want to say it. Um, so one of the things, so the two main topics um, I have for um, talking to customers is one about sales and one about recruiting. So I'm gonna talk about how I chat about sales first to get sales and then uh, switch over to recruiting. Um, so the number one thing I figured out early on is that you have to train your customers how you want to be treated. Um, I see a lot of people and I started out chasing my tail and just wanting anybody to order anytime, anywhere, anytime, and just going, yes, yes, yes. And do you need an order? And I'll get you this one bar. And it wasn't worth that much running around for me, especially when you're brand, brand new um, to chase all of those sales. So instead of me chasing customers, I wanted customers to chase me. So I just set clear boundaries um, at the very beginning when I, and I mean, very beginning, my goal was to get $200 a month. I just wanted to be active. And that was also back when $200 a month would get you free shipping. So my goal was once a month to get free shipping. Um, I did it on the 15th of every month so that I wouldn't miss all of the sales. It was kind of mid month was easy to get those um, extra sales and it gave me some time. Um, and so I would tell people that I am putting in a free shipping order on the 15th. I told them all the time I was consistent, no matter what I was putting in that free shipping order. It did take a leap of faith for me to put that boundary down because I didn't always know where that $200 was coming from. And when you have like one or two customers, um, it's pretty scary to say, yep, I'm going to give you free shipping in two weeks. So it, it was really motivating for me to go, no, 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 I got to get them. I got, you know, I need to get more and more. Um, but the other thing was, is I would get someone like on the 16th or 17th go, oh, hey, shoot, I have this for my, you know, for the next order. Um, or can I still get it in? And I would actually tell customers, no, I would say I can absolutely get it for you. Is it time sensitive? Is it time sensitive? Because if it is, I can put that order in for you right now and here's your total and then they would pay shipping. But if it wasn't time sensitive, I would actually hold that order until my next one um, and if they wanted free shipping. So I trained them to react to me. So if I send you a text on the 10th and I'm giving you until the 15th to respond, it is their consequence for not responding that they don't get their order on that month. And then once I got those orders, then I could switch to two free shipping orders, which really, really helped. So now, and I still do it now, it's just my goal is higher. Um, I do two $500 free shipping parties per month. I do it on the 1st and the 15th. So now they're only waiting two weeks if they miss it, but I don't let people get free shipping if they miss that date because those are my boundaries. Um, and then I set that set that for them. So they know if I text you, you better get your order to me really quick if you want to save money. Um, and I also set myself up for, um, by the way, I hate the way I'm wording some things. It sounds like really conceited, like me, 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 but I'm just talking to you like you're my friend. Sorry. <laughs> um, is you set yourself up for future conversations. So when I put things in their, um, when I package their orders, um, cause 90% of my orders are local people cause they want the free shipping. Um, and then I either do porch pickup or drop off. Um, but I will put, so when I put the paraphernalia in their bags, like these, I'm putting one in every single order, no matter what, um, I will say, I will text them two days later and say, did you find the hidden sticker? And they're like, what hidden sticker? It makes them look at your stuff, especially when they see it all the time. 
And then I ask them or I'll say, did you like the hidden sticker? Did you like the smell of the hidden sticker? So then when you talk to them, you're not talking about sales. You're not trying to, it's not the basic, hey, did you like the bar? You know, I just hate having those same conversations over and over again. So I'll say, did you like the smell of the hidden sticker? And then that opens that conversation or they'll say, oh, I don't like bakery ones or that one's too strong. And I'm like, yeah, it's not really for me either. I prefer the fruit. You were just training them and you to have conversations a in which they respond because there's nothing I hate more than being ghosted um it trains them to respond and it trains you to have authentic conversation but you're setting yourself up with the conversations ahead of time so that it comes organically and it's not force it's not salesman it's not um it it's not like hey did you like everything you're saying the same thing every time um the other one that I like to and you're I know that you guys are trained um, amazingly, but I'm just going to reiterate real quick. You should also be having the conversations that have nothing to do with sales. So thank you so much for your order. Um, your order has just shipped. I saw it shipped. Um, it should be arriving Tuesday. How exciting. I hope you love everything. And then a week later, did you get everything? Or if you're delivering it, then that's when you have this conversation one week after the order comes in. Um, but those are three conversations per order per person that you are not talking or trying to get a sale out of them. So you're having conversations. So they're used to talking to you and responding anyway. Um, and I know that's a standard training and I'm sure you guys have been trained on that. Um, the other one is my, this made me think of you. I've had a lot of success with this. Um, we all post really, really pretty pictures of stuff all the time and try and get people to engage. Um, and it works sometimes depending on what it is and it doesn't work other times. So there's no real rhyme or reason for me, um, unless it's a pumpkin warmer and then I can get engagement, but that's not, that doesn't work year round. Um, what I do is I take my personal ratty old catalog and I do not do pretty photos. I, this is how I am authentic with my friends is when I get a catalog, I'll say, oh my gosh, I was just looking through here this made me think of you. The this made me think of you is the fastest way to get um, increased activity, increased sales. It also increases your Facebook al algorithm. I do most of my messaging is either in a text message or on Facebook Messenger where I have read receipts so I can tell if they've, if they've read it or not. But I will put my finger in it. I will let them see the tabs at the top. I will let them see that this is not a stock photo. This isn't something cute I've pulled off the internet. This is a genuine conversation. This made me think of you. Oh my gosh, you went to the Oregon coast this summer. This made me think of you. Um, you're not asking for a sale. You're not asking them to buy it. You're not even telling them how much it costs. You are a real person, a real friend who was like, you know what? I was flipping through the catalog and this made me think of you. People love to be thought of. Mental health is a huge, huge ordeal. People need to be seen. People need to be loved. This made me think of you is an extremely powerful phrase, whether you get a sale or not. It's an extremely powerful phrase. People want to be seen, heard, and noticed. This is a real picture of with my finger in it. This is not, hey, I'm trying to get a sale. Look at how pretty this warmer is. It's not. That one is huge for me. Um, also when I get, sorry, I'm just going down my list. Um, when I get a sale, a new customer, a referral or anything, I text them. And when I say thank you for the very first time, so this is when I have a new customer, um, I will say, Hey, by the way, I do two free shipping orders a month on the first and the 15th. I also send one or two texts per month with deals, sales, things coming up. I like to spoil my customers and show you things before they're available to the public. People love to know that they have something that no one else has. It's all in the wording. We all know that we have access to the pictures of next month's scent of the month. You can make your customer feel like they're seeing it first. They're the first ones to see it. And you're the only person that they like. Make every person feel special just in your words. It doesn't have to be in your freebies and your samples and all that. It's It can be in your wording as well. Um, oh, so the point of that was, is I tell them in that same text. So I'm going to text you once or twice a month because I don't want people paying full price. I want to get things as cheap as I possibly can. So that's why I offer free shipping twice a month. Um, 
So please don't feel bad telling me no. You're not telling me no. It's just not the sale that you want. I give permission for people to tell me no so that they are more likely to talk to me. People don't want to say no, so they'll, they won't respond at all, which is the same thing as no, but it honestly hurts my feelings more. <laughs> like I would rather you give me a thumbs down than me to see that the post was read and that you didn't even reply. So train people how you want to be treated. Give them permission to say no, but also it's kind of subliminally saying, I expect you to respond. Um, and so that will increase your responses as well. And here's the thing is nobody's going to order every single month anyway. So we should set that expectation for ourselves, share these sales and deals. And then when it's their turn, when it's something they're passionate about, they'll get it. Um, also, people love sales. They love thinking that they are special and that they're getting something nobody else is getting, even if it's just a picture. Um, the other thing I say is, and this is going to sound crazy, but I do not give out my link unless they ask for it. I make them ask for it. I will say in there, I don't spam people. Let me know if you want the link. Or if I'm, if something's launching, like a, if let's say it's a flash sale or something, there's a mega flash sale, everything's 70% off. Let me know if you want the link. I make them respond so that it in, a, increases our algorithm. They're more likely to see my posts, but also they have to have some skin in the game because our, um, relationship is not a one-way street. So I make them respond or um, also because I don't spam people. So I'm respecting their boundaries by not spamming them with junk mail and links and stuff that they don't really want. So you got to ask me if you want it. Um, and I have had people who now, because I've done that for literally two years, I see a lot of questions. I will absolutely answer all those. Um, where people, people will see my posts online. Like I'll just post a pretty picture. Like I did my mantle with all the pumpkins. And then I'm like, check out the one on the right. And that's the, um, the warmer of the month for next month. And I'll just say, peep this one over here, blah, blah, blah. And people are like, send me that link now. And I'm like, there's not even a link. You ding dong. You can't have it until October. And I make them wait and I get them excited and I make them wait. So it's all in your wording. Um, let's see. Oh, one quick tip I got from Laura Godwin, who she's the queen. Um, and this one was really good for sales too, is when you're closing a party. Um, I don't know why I put this right here, but I was just brainstorming and since they're getting all the goodness, Laura Godwin said, if you're closing a party and you don't want to spend your half offs or don't have money at that moment for half offs, um, is you can text the five people who have spent the most money with you and say, Hey, you were number two in sales this month. Congrats. You unlocked a half off item. When you use, and this is Laura's training, when you use the word unlocked, it makes it seem like a prize. It's literally just the wording and it makes them excited and makes them order something. And then you will absolutely get sales from that. Probably seven times out of 10, when I said that to a person, A, they say, how far away was I from number one? Because <laughs> I always tell them that they're number two. How far away was I from number one? And they want something more than the half off. Well, while I'm at it, I'm out of this. Well, I'm going to get this thing half off, but while I'm at it, I actually also need washer whips too. I'm like, do you? Blah, blah, blah. Sale, add on, add on, add on. Um, so just chatting with customers about that, get, telling them they unlock prizes. These people are your VIPs. So wait, I do that all the time. I don't really need it. Yes, exactly. Um, so you're giving them a special gift. You're giving them something half off. They, they didn't even have a party. They didn't even get you a customer. They didn't. You're just treating them with kindness and giving them good customer service. Meanwhile, getting sales. Um, okay. So now I'm going to flip. That was for chatting with people about um, sales. Now I'm going to switch a little bit to recruiting. This is one of my favorite tips to give. It's a smidgen aggressive. I'm not going to lie, but I love it. <laughs> okay. When I'm about to close a party, because I do two $500 parties a month, this is going to blow your mind. Maybe. I don't know how you guys party. I've never done a Facebook party and I've never done a home party ever. All of my sales come from texting and talking to people, all of them. Um, I will sometimes have someone, oh, because I do the VIP links, like everybody gets shopping links. And so they'll rack up $500 that way. And I've done stuff like that, but they're texting their people. I am not. So 
it's kind of a different way to do it. Um, so, but I have two $500 parties going in every month. So that means I have a free hostess kit available. So what I do is I take about one eighth, one tenth of my customer list and I just go alphabetically so I can keep where I am. And I will text 10 or 20 people and I will say, I have a, um, a free host. And I say, I can say free because it's in a private message. I don't say free kit publicly. Um, but I say, I have a free hostess kit available. Let me know if you'd like to see it. Um, and then I just send that to about 20 people. I wait for a few hours. So I'll usually do that in the afternoon when I'm going to go close a party after work or late that night. Um, usually if I text between 10 and 15 people, I'll get about two responses. I'll get one. Both of them want to see it. They want to see what comes in the kit. So I'll send them the picture. I send a picture first and then I send or I ask if they want to see the link to find out more and to see if they have any questions. And then usually, usually they'll ask to see the link and then I will send them the link. Um, so that's how I work recruiting is through the hostess kits. Um, it does not work every month. I'm going to tell you that right now. It does not work every month, but that's my the rhythm that I keep. And then I just keep going down through my contact list each every two weeks with new people. Um, especially if they're new, um, I offer it to them while they're still more excited than people who've been ordering from me for four years. Um, but here's the trick. Here's the aggressive part. When the party closes and it's done, I will go back to the 10 people who didn't respond at all. If they saw the part, like if they saw my message and it's read and they didn't even respond, I will res I will type again and I will say, ah, oh, shoot, that one got claimed fast. Sorry, let me know if you want to see the next one. Because A, it trains them to respond to you. B, you offered them something and then took it away because they didn't it uh, because they didn't respond fast enough. So um, it gives them ownership like this is your kit. Let me know if you want it. And then I'll then I'll but I'll message every single one of them. I've had a few people come back and say, wait, 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 wait. You gave my kit to somebody else. I'm like, oh, <laughs> you just said my kit. Got them. Two weeks. I'm going to have another one. We'll get you excited. Hey, guess what? In those two weeks, um, I'm going to give you a link. Blah, 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 blah. Here's your party link. Here's your VI. Yes. First come first serve. Exactly. But, um, I'll say, here's your party link. You're going to start getting orders right now. And we're going to party together because I already know I have $500 coming. I'm going to put my orders in her party. And that's how I communicate with her over the next two weeks. I say, here's your party. You send this out. Um, a lot of times I'll do like, if you text 25 people with your link, I'll give you a free cent of the month bar or something. I give her some incentive to text 25 people her link. I don't tell her she's having a party. We all know that everybody hates the word party. Um, but as I get orders, I'll put them in there and I'll text her and say, hey, I just put in a $35 order on our party, just so you know. Hey, I just put in a $100 party on our party and I want, and I start a, I start training her as my consultant already because she's part of my family now and I'm gonna love her forever. And I start, um, she's, she's already starting in sales so that when we get to that $500 party, she's already lost that stigma of, I don't know who's going to buy this, who I'll never get any sales or whatever. She starts out with $500 in sales. So I add those on for her. Two weeks later, she hits the ground running. Um, but going back to those people who didn't respond, I have had people come back later and be like, yeah, let me know the next one. Can I see what's in the kit? So if I, I see if I want the next one, like, or can you tell me first? Um, so do not be afraid to go back to those people that ghosted you because people are watching you. I cannot even express to you. People are watching. They absolutely are watching. I know everybody thinks nobody's seeing my post. Nobody's engaging. Nobody's doing this. It's because they're afraid that we're just going to pounce on them. Because so many consultants, when anybody engages on your post, you're like, oh, hey, I'm here. Hey, do you want this? I have it in five colors. You can put 13 different colored bulbs in it. Um, can I send you the join link right now? Gosh, I can't wait. Do you want a sneak peek to our team? Should, like. No, no, no. <laughs> like they just wanted to see a little bit. You know what I mean? That like they just wanted to test it out. So this is a great way to test it out. A, it shows that you're they're not going to do it alone. Nobody wants to do this alone. So 
come join my family. We're going to do this together. I'm going to show you. I'm going to start from day one. We're doing this together. We have a party. You don't have a party where you have to go out and find everybody. Watch. I'm going to show you too. We're both going to put orders in there. Okay. Um, oh, also, so it goes back to the giving them ownership. I, when, um, when I go, sorry, when I'm messaging the people, if somebody comes right out and says no, I will immediately follow up with, do you know anybody I can bless with this kit? Because it is a blessing. Having a free kit is absolutely a blessing. So you have something that people want and people need. They just don't know we have it. So do not be afraid to share it. Do you know anyone I can bless with this kit? Because if you do, if you give me someone to join, I'll give you a free warmer. Any warmer in that catalog is worth a recruit to me. Anyone. I'll put it on a free or half off, or I might have it in stock. Like who cares? If you find me somebody, I'm absolutely giving you a free warmer. If you are not in a position to be able to do that, you can say, I'll give you free anything, a warmer scent of the month or bar, or whatever. Just offer them something in return for them reaching out for you. Um, that one has actually worked pretty good. Someone's sister joined over that because she needed help making a car payment. Um, she's like, my sister just recently got divorced um, and she's she's either going to have to get another job or she needs part-time something. And I'm like, honey, give her to me. We will help her make car payments. Like we will do this. And I just loved on her. And here we are. Like she's, she's part of my family now. So um, do not be afraid. And also if you have, if you have that fear of someone telling you, no, it's not a no when you extend the conversation. So do you want this kit? No. Do you know anyone I can bless with this warmer? That's your response. It's not straight dagger to your heart. Oh my gosh, why am I doing this? It's not that, okay? They're finding someone. Also, if they're not finding you someone right that minute, they at least know that you have that opportunity to bless someone. So if they ever know someone who needs to be blessed by this, you're the person they're thinking of. So you've left that conversation open for that. Um, let's see. Oh, the other thing I, um, conversation that I have, I kind of try and catch people before they're scared is basic way to say it is as soon as I get a new recruit, like literally the day they join, I say, go get your ride or die. Your sister, your best friend, whatever, go get, go tell them you're excited. You just joined like this silly thing, we're going to do it together. Go get your ride or die. Do it right now. We'll tra I'll train you up together. I'll throw you in a group chat. You won't even have to do it. You'll start out with somebody on your team. Go get your best friend or your sister or your aunt or your mom. Join together. Have them join under you. Same day. Go get them. Let's do it together. Then that ends up, I've, that's, um, I want to say three times that has happened. They instantly start out with a teammate. They instantly start out with somebody they can text about it. We're, you're, you're instantly getting sales and they see success really fast. So if you catch them before they're too afraid to go talk to somebody, before they're a salesman, before they feel salesman-y, then they're more likely to have a really uh, an easier conversation. And they can say, hey, I just joined and the lady who's doing it said we can be trained together. Um, here's my link, join with me right now. Um, and like I said, it's the fast way to get two, a two for one. Also, we say the same thing over and over and over and over. It's way easier to say it to two people than it is to one person and train them up side by side. It really is. So do yourself a favor and preempt some of those conversations. Um, let me look. Mm -hmm. I think that's most of my notes. I just have one comment. I don't know what, actually where it goes, but when you are, um, it's in recruiting. It's when you are thinking about who you want to talk to next about joining. It has been my experience that hustlers know how to hustle. So we tend to gravitate towards people who we think need the money or people who we think have the time to do this. It has been my experience that if you are so busy because you're a hustler and really good at multitasking, then you are perfect for this. If you are a couch potato, those people are generally lazy and not looking for a reason to get up. 
they're not looking to be busy or they would be busy with other things in their lives. So don't hunt and peck for somebody that you think would be good on your team. Blanketly offer it to everyone and let them decide. Do not predict who would be good on your team. Okay, so just random advice there, I guess. <laughs> um, I think that's it. Did you guys have questions? I saw a whole bunch of stuff going through the chat, so I wanted to help, help, help. I think that I mitigated most of the stuff that came through the chat, but I'll just reiterate what they said. Yeah. Uh, Summerlin was asking, do you have to have a certain number of customers for the free shipping trick? And I just reiterated that it's no certain amount of customers, yeah. just has to be $350 in order shipping to that one locality. So that mm -hmm. one address, whether mm -hmm. that be you or your host or anything like mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. um, and she said, what? go ahead. Go ahead. Well, one thing I do is on the first of the month is when I put in all my whiff box orders. Mm -hmm. So that is enough for me right there. Um, and then I'll put in my, the 350 is usually like my follow-ups, just bars, like the random things. The first of the month is really my big order. So if you wanted to start out that way, um, I would pick the time of the month that you get your most sales and say, right now and text all of your customers and be like, I've started a new thing. We're on the 15th of every month or pick your day, whatever. On the first of every month, I'm putting in my big free shipping order. If you'd like on it, let me know. And it's, it makes an easier conversation because once everybody knows that that's your date and time, then when they get a text five days before that, that says, Hey, uh, here's the picture of the warmer of the month. Um, I'm going to be putting my order in on the first. Let me know if you want anything added to your order. I always say, do you want not, do you want anything? What can I get you? What do you need? What do you want? It's, can I add anything to your order? I always try and find ways to word it, to give them ownership. So if, if somebody only orders every once, every three months, they are a consistent customer. That's just their rhythm and their routine. If they, if they order every month, that's great, but you have to, um, some people are on different rhythms. So it doesn't matter if they're on every order, they can still be a consistent customer. So you consistently need to text them. And, oh, I'm going to tell you this one quick story because it still blows my mind. It just happened. Um, the importance of follow-up. I'm, I guarantee you've been trained on this. I know it, but it actually happened to me. Um, it was in January. Um, I got a random order on my um, page. It was for $114. And it was from my neighbor that lives, I'm sitting in my craft room. It was from my neighbor that lives catty corner to me. Mm -hmm. The reason she found me is because she said, pick a consultant near me. And I got her. I was like $114. Oh my God. I was like, what can I get her? So I'm like shoving a bag full of stuff. I give her a catalog, like I want to give her a present while she's waiting for her order to come because she paid shipping. And so I was like, I don't even a hundred dollar order. Are you joking? me? So I put all this stuff in there. I walked it over to her and I was like, I can't believe you don't know that I sold Scentsy. I'm so sorry. You're never going to pay shipping again. You don't have to worry about that. But I wanted you to have some goodies while you wait for your order to come in. And she goes, oh my gosh, thank you so much. She goes, I actually order from Scentsy.com every month. And I let Sensi pick the consultant that it goes to because I just figured that would be a happy surprise for them. Uh -huh. And I was like, oh, okay. And so, and then I was like, oh, okay. You, all the free stuff is absolutely yours. But if you already have a consultant, I am not taking, like, I am not a consultant, steal, customer stealer. Like if you have someone, God bless you and you stay with them. And she goes, no, I don't have one. I order from a different consultant every month. I've been doing it for almost two years you're the first person to say thank you, even in a text. And she's holding my little goodie bag. And she was like, I can't believe you're giving me all this free stuff. It was a scent of the month bar and a scent circle. She had ordered 22 times, a hundred dollars, 22 times. And no one even said, thank you. Like I, I was like, oh, honey, no, <laughs> you are never going anywhere else again. She's been my customer ever since because I follow up because I text her because I send her the two texts a month. And she'll say sometimes she's like, nope, I'm good. I'm stacked because she'll she'll get she orders like a lot all at once. And so then she won't order for a month or two or whatever. Totally fine. Don't even care. But follow up is 
insanely important. And my husband's in sales. So he always says, why on earth would you work so hard to get a new customer only to completely ignore them and go find another one? Like treat the customers you have really well and they'll stay. And then you just keep adding to them. So, all right. What else? Um, I don't think they have a heart date. Yeah. So that was yeah, having a hard date. Perfect. Mm -hmm. And I, I just said, no, a hard date. You're planning on entering all your orders, including your own, to be able to reach that 350. Um, and then yeah. I don't Perfect. think that your tactic on your, um, kits is that aggressive at all. No, I feel it feels passive aggressive, but I actually don't care. I'm a little passive aggressive anyway. It's, it's, not cold messaging. That's where I draw the line at aggressive. Oh, no. Mm -mm. no. I'm like, uh-uh. Nobody should be in your inbox saying, hey, I see you're, see you're hurting for money. I have a kit. That's $22. No. I'd like to buy it today. Well, and um, I've even seen, and it's not even on any of our teams. It was a million years ago, but I actually saw someone going, I need to make my, um, my power bill payment. I need 236 more dollars to earn the commission to get to pay my bills or whatever. And I was like, the ick. No, the no, ick. no. I have, please no. I follow like do a girl. 10 bar special or something, like offer something. I don't know, but oh, please. No. I follow one girl who has hopped around from company to company and she is always posting about how she struggles to get active and she needs this amount of money and she's tagging anybody and everybody that she's. Yeah. And I was like, honey, if you just create rapport yeah. with your customers and stop yeah. looking like you're absolutely mm -hmm. desperate. I'm like, well, and if you run your, and this is, goes back to training your customers. Um, if you run it like a business, they'll treat you like a business. Like amen. they'll they respect that. So I, like I said, and I've actually gotten to recruit this way. I posted a picture of like, I, I Googled crazy train and I was like, guess what? We have a joint special. I'm not even going to fuss around with the wording. Um, I'm on a crazy train. Come join me. Like, are you jumping on? Like, are you on or are you off? Like, I don't mess around. Like, you with me or not? Like, let's do it. I love you. Come on. <laughs> like, so it works. But then also when you get them, you do have to love them. You have to love on them and answer the same questions 80,000 times. <laughs> Yeah. Anybody else have any questions, comments, or concerns? Or other topics that um, you have trouble wording or whatever. And also, if you think of it later, find me online, Brandi Uris, Y-E-A-R-O-U-S. Find me online, message me. I'm happy to talk to you guys anytime. Absolutely anytime. I would love to help. So mostly, if you don't like being told no, don't ask yes or no questions. It could have been a one minute. Yeah. I could have just said that and been done. If you don't like being told no, don't give them the option. Yes. Don't, don't it's ask. Like, no. I always equate it to when I go to Starbucks, which is probably like four times a week, mm -hmm. instead of asking me, is that it? Or are, mm -hmm. are you done? Or is that the end of your order? It's always, what else can I add to you for you? Yeah. What else can I add for you? And you want to know what more often than not, do I get the muffin? Because yeah. they ask me, what else can I add for you? Instead of, are you done with your order? Well, and you know what else too is I, my team has a hard time with is, um, getting the additional sale. Like when they want something, getting that additional sale, if somebody orders two bars, I will say they're three for 17, pick one more. I don't Not, even do three for 17, no. but no, but like I'm saying at any time, I'm, yeah. I don't say, do you want one more? Can you get one more? Like, not like, no, pick one more. Buy <laughs> they're, oh, you ordered four, they're five buy five, get one free, pick two yeah. more. Big my customers five. are so trained to know that they, if you're going to buy one bar, buy one bar and just be done with it or buy six, because it makes exactly. more financial sense in the long run to have six bars that you can cycle through. And if you're using the appropriate number of cubes, mm -hmm. like you're supposed to be, you're going to go mm -hmm. through them faster. So yeah. my customers know I don't fiddle with the three for 17. And I learned that at events because when I started doing events, it was like, people would be like, how much are your bars? We start, well, it's one for one for six, three for 17, no. six for 30. Yeah. No, you can buy one for $6 or you can buy five and get one free. Yep. Exactly. <clears throat> Done. Exactly. Yep. So well, and said, also we're not, people don't like, it's our verbiage and our lingo. It's not, people don't know about the bundles. They honestly don't. They forget how much they are or they don't even know. Or sometimes they think, I have people who think the six for, um, six for 30 is a special that only I offer. 
it's, it's yeah I mean they don't know it's not their job to know it's my job to know it's my job to get them their product for as cheap as I possibly can mm-hmm. give make them feel special and and give them the best deals I can my trouble in my VIP group is wording Facebook algorithm scares me tired of being in Facebook yes yes definitely don't post your link yeah. ever don't post pricing because that's how the algorithm picks it up um my biggest thing is always posting like if you if you struggle with that always feeling like you're constantly um being looked at like you're copy and pasting or or regurg- mm-hmm. regurgitating the stuff out of the workstation create mm-hmm. user generated content show your customers mm-hmm. what you're using and mm-hmm. if you're not using our products there's a problem all in itself yeah. Yeah. show them when you change your wax show them mm-hmm. when you're using washer whiffs show them even if you make uh, just one post of you pouring some washer whiffs in your, in your, in your washer, not in your dryer. Don't pour them in your dryer for the love of God, please. Don't. Yeah, <laughs> please um, no. but pour them in your washer, take a picture. Like you have your phone mm-hmm. on you more often than not snap mm-hmm. a quick pic, post it on Facebook. There's your, you're done for the day. Mm-hmm. If they can see you're using the products, you're going to build that rapport with them that they can come to you if they have a question or mm-hmm. they want to try them. Y'all, how many of y'all have gone out and bought books after I, um, just started my bookstagram. Yeah. Like it, it's yeah. so easy to influence people and not mm-hmm. be salesy. Like mm-hmm. we're in an influence. Yeah, but you're not Googling the cover of your book and putting, you know what I mean? Like you're, you're, you're doing what I said though. You're showing the book with your bookshelves in the background. Mm-hmm. And the other thing about the algorithm is the, um, Facebook can tell if your picture has logos on it, copyright. Mm -hmm. So, and I don't mean like this because this is a, this would be a real photo, but when we post Disney stuff, that's the stuff for me that never, anything with a logo never, never gets seen because the, uh, the algorithm can pick up that the image is a licensed product. Mm -hmm. And I think Um, if I'm not mistaken, we have a whole training. Um, I may not have uploaded it or I may not have recorded it because, you know, sometimes I forget. Mm -hmm. Um, but Katie Edick, she does a wonderful job. She's a director, um, who does a wonderful job of user generated content, especially around Disney stuff, because that's the hardest stuff to market Mm -hmm. without falling into that algorithm black hole. Mm -hmm. She does a lot of user generated content because she's a Disney family. Like they Mm -hmm. are a very heavy Disney family. They have costumes for everything. Like Mm -hmm. she took a trash bag and made a Baymax, like, Oh, helmet like thing and took a trash bag and had her husband blowing her trash bag up with a leaf blower like oh creative and get yeah. fun like well and the, personality in it the other thing about Cincy though too is and it's just part of being authentic you can't like everything you, if you like everything nobody believes you if you say oh my gosh it's totally my favorite every time oh my gosh guess what this month this time I tell it no it's not there's no way Nobody likes around the campfire. Nobody like literally stop it. No, I will not argue. (laughs) I will not argue. That one smells like smoke and it's dumb. I hate it. My husband likes it. Everybody. (laughs) I love campfires too, but he he puts it in his office and it smells of the entire, like he can put like two cubes in his office and it smells of and I love, smells very similar to around the Is it? Yeah. Oh, I'm glad you told me that. My daughter insisted. She's three. Okay. Three. Mm-hmm. And she goes, um, mama, I want to pick my own wax. And I was like, okay. And she was like, I want Harry Potter. I want the red Harry Potter. And I was like, God, no, please. No. <laughs> yes. And I put two cubes in her four cube or warmer. Mm-hmm. And it literally, I felt like it was the never ending fragrance. Oh. It never went away. But here's the thing is don't be afraid to tell people that you don't like something because yes. then it makes you more believable when you do. Every time I do a live, because I'm not a big, I'm not a super big bakery fan. Me I, I mean, I love the smells, but I don't want them like warming and heavy and you just so loud. <laughs> um, I'm more of a fruity and clean kind of gal. Well, when I'm smelling them out of the box and telling people what they are, I'm like, Bleh. like, do Damn. not be afraid. Do not see. There you go. Yeah. Same. I my like husband it. once I don't said, hide it. Yes. My, the group will tell you anybody who's been around a while will tell you. So like my favorite thing to do is bring back my bar, buy the kit and let my husband smell them. Because oh yeah. I do my kids. Apologetically. Yeah. Harsh. Yeah. 
one time we were sitting there smelling fragrances and he said that I can't remember what scent it was I think it was like wild black cherry or something Mm -hmm. he smelled it and he said it smells like a urinal cake and I was like yeah you're like okay nobody's ordering that one (laughs) or squeeze the day smells like a bottom of a bag of fruit loops not just a bag of fruit loops the bottom of the bag you want to know what my my second favorite of all time my customers always come to me and say can I get that scent that smells like fruit loops or the bottom of a bag of fruit loops yeah or Mm -hmm. cotton cleanups I call them scentsy tampons all the time (laughs) all the time the first time the first time you soak up red wax with those suckers they look like a dang used tampon so Um, my customers will message me and be like, I need Scentsy tampons. They don't know that they're called cotton clean. I love it. Yeah. No, but yeah. Don't expect any of your customers to know anything. Oh, there's Sarah. Cherry limeade. Yes. Got me. Uh, mm. I think my favorite of all time, anything pear, that perfect day, one, cream, money. Oh, I'll take them all. And the, uh, Jack's obsession. It's like oh. pure pear. Oh. Love Jackson. That's what I have in my whole house right now. That's my favorite. I all time. Clean and easy. Yep. What else was I going to say? Isn't the one? <laughs> no, cherry <laughs> limeade smells like a gas station bathroom. <laughs> oh, you're so right, though. Oh, and I've gross. said that since the day it was in the catalog. I literally took one sniff of it and I said, that's a gas station bathroom right there. Oh, so bad. <laughs> the renews it. The renews yeah. it like twist so up things. So yes. it's crazy how fragrance is, but, um, mm-hmm. I will let you guys go for the evening. It's almost yeah. 10. You girls still got to do dishes and go to bed. Um, seven o'clock comes real early in the morning when the toddler's standing over top. Of um, so I hope you guys got some tidbits out of this. I absolutely did. I am for sure going to be implementing some of them, especially with our move to Georgia and mm-hmm. my struggle to figure out what I'm going to do about local customers here in Virginia. Um, so thank you, Brandy, so much for coming and training. I genuinely appreciate it. Ew, get up at five. No, thank you. Um, my husband, well, I'm luckier because I'm two hours ahead of you guys. It's only eight o'clock here. Oh my God. My husband gets up at the early shift. He gets up at four o'clock. Mm. He can deal with that. He can oh, deal with the tiny terrorist at four o'clock in the morning. She's was so nice to meet you all. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah. Thanks so much. And we'll, Back we'll, anytime. Yeah, we'll have to do this again. Yeah, um, yeah. So I hope you guys have a wonderful week and um, we will chat later. See y'all later. Thanks, guys. See you. Bye. Bye.